What's up guys, Devil Dog Gamer here. Today we're going to be talking about if I could make a World War II game, exactly what kind of World War II game would I make? And what would it be like? Like what would my dream World War II game be if I actually could make one? To me that's really simple. It would focus solely on air power and sea power. So it'd be kind of a mix of a few games. IL-2 1946, the Silent Hunter series, War on the Sea, and U-Boat. So you could take any plane, any boat, and just take it out to sea, or run it in task force, or run historical missions. You, wanted to t you want to command a destroyer, a sub, battleship, carrier, whatever. You know, you want to be a carrier plane, and a Hellcat or anything like that, or a Zero, and operate off a carrier, done. You can do that instead. You want to go fly B-29s and go bomb Japan? Done. You can do that. There's a lot of things, a lot of games that I see that I'm like, I love parts of this. And it would, if it was all thrown into one game, it would be absolutely amazing. And like, I promise you when I, when I start making sense of this, you're going to be like, all right, that would be pretty cool. Especially if you like anything air and sea power. So the first thing is I would make the game world and the way the ships operate exactly like the Silent Hunter series. If you've never played Silent Hunter, it's the best sub World War II sub game on the market. You can do U-boats or you can do the American subs in the Pacific. The game world itself is so massive, you can take a sub from San Francisco, sail it all the way to Japan in real time with no loading screens. If you wanted to take that time to sail 20 knots from San Francisco to Japan, it would take the real time amount of time behind your computer to do it. The game world's massive. You want to sail to Hawaii, done. You want to turn around and go somewhere else, done. That's the kind of world I would do where you had just the entire Atlantic and the Med open, the entire Pacific open to kind of play with. If you want to sail your fleet from San Francisco out to somewhere in Tokyo, you can do it and it would be there to do. That would be the base. And then how the ship's weapon systems would work is kind of similar to the Silent Hunter series. You can go for your navigation room and then you can go into your guns and you can kind of take, you have command of this ship, but you can take the actual stations if you want and kind of command them from there. So say you're a destroyer, you want to go to, you can go take a look at the sonar and be like, okay, and then you tell your, you know, the bridge, all right, go make this adjustment, turn here, turn there, and then you can actually man the guns and stuff like that and fire them for yourself. Something similar to that. That's kind of how, like, you would operate these ships. Now, aircraft carriers are a little different. Aircraft carriers, you could control them and stuff like that, but you could issue your air wings. So it would kind of be like more of, and you could take control of fleets exactly the same way. So similar to the game War on the Sea, where it's kind of a, you control the fleets and you issue them orders and things like that. You could control the carrier like that, uh, and you can control an entire fleet like that. So you could tell the carrier, you know, you're driving the carrier, you tell the air wings where to go and do their stuff. Or you can just jump into the seat of a plane yourself, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Or you can control the entire fleet and say, you know, the task force and say, all right, destroyers, go do this, that, kind of like an RTS. Or you can just take control of a single ship and kind of do whatever you wanted to do. So that's kind of how the aircraft carriers would operate. You would tell the planes kind of how to go in an RTS or take command of the whole task force and tell them how to go as an RTS. Or just take a destroyer and do whatever the hell you want or sail the Bismarck into New York Harbor and just shell it kind of like you're running a, you know, you're in control of the whole ship and you're taking control of everything. Now when it comes to aircraft, I would take pretty much everything from IL-2 1946 and just throw it into the game. All in one go. And people are going to be like, but Devil Dog, there's the new IL-2s and they are superior. No, they're not. They're better graphically and flight characteristically wise. But they ain't better in terms of what it is. Because IL-2 1946 had so much fucking content, so much crap you could do, that it's going to take IL-2 goddamn 20 years to catch up with it. I mean, you wanted to go drop B-20, you don't want to fly B-29s and drop bombs in Japan? Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, you want to do B-17s? Yeah, you can fly B-17s too. You want to go hunt subs in the North North Sea? Yeah, you can do that with some patrol aircraft. Done. Take all of that, throw it in. And that's kind of how like I would like to work the, the air power. You could fly complete combat missions with a bomber, B-25s, B-29s, P-38s, fly island hopping in, in the Pacific, or, you know, go hunt, hunt U-boats out in the North Atlantic with patrol aircraft, dro dropping depth charges on them and stuff like that or operate planes off of a carrier. And that's kind of how it would work as a carrier too, is if you wanted to take control of the carrier, you tell the air wings what to do, and then you just jump into a plane and you fly it yourself until it dies and you jump in another one that's on the deck or you know has already landed and you take care of that and you go do its thing with that. That's kind of like what I would love with the air power. And then plus the mission editor that you got with IL-2 1946 was so in depth 
that you could just make your own freaking campaigns. And that's what you would do in the game. You could make your own campaigns. And when it comes to the campaigns, I would like kind of how Silent Hunter is, where the task, everything would happen kind of as it does. Midway would fall on the exact date. The certain fleets would be in the certain places they were supposed to be. And you could play it kind of like that, where, you know, everything's got to happen a certain way. So you know when Iwo Jima's going to get hit, that's your mission. Or you could just be a complete sandbox, alternate history. You, you know, they're sailing the freaking, they're sailing the freaking Yamato, you know, along the West Coast, shelling all of California. What do you do? Kind of thing, you know? Or U-boats are torpedoing ships in New York Harbor. What do we do? You know, or the Bismarck somehow made it to Florida, you know? That, that's kind of would be the awesome part of the game is like you could either do it historical or just throw it out the window and let the AI go crazy. Now, another thing I'd like to do is because, you know, there will be like an RTS kind of aspect to it. If you want to actually take over Task Force and things like that, I want to take things like from War of the S on the Sea where you could actually go and capture these islands and then you got to actually supply them and build the bases on there. So you'd have to kind of work on getting your cargo ships from your Task Force unloading everything and you know dropping everything off there and then the next time you come back there'll be a dock built up for you and supplies or oh we need to resupply this island so we're going to take our task force go pick up some merchants and bring escort them over to that island things like that so you could kind of build bases along the way like you know if you wanted to do germany you could be like well we just took iceland so guess what that's our floating aircraft carrier now you know let me drop make sure our u-boats can clear a path or you know we can get our cargo ships up there and offload troops and aircraft and things like that. Just kind of a cool thing to do along the way, you know, with the campaign. You'd actually have to kind of focus on, like, supplies and things like that. And speaking of supplies, while U-Boat's cool and all, it does have one really cool thing that I, that I like about it. There's a lot of crew management, and that's pretty cool. But you also need to make sure you have all the supplies that you need for your ship. Ammo, weapons, food, everything like that. And... That's something I would love to add into the game where, you know, you don't have to worry about fuel and ammunition. You also have to make sure all the food and medicine and supplies on your ship are up, are stocked. You have to physically stock them yourself, kind of pull them out like, you know, when you get into the port and fill up all your ships for what you're going to need. And if you have, you know, infantry on the ship, you're going to need more food because you're going to have to feed them too. And then whatever supplies they need when they get to the island or wherever they're going and things like that. And that would kind of dictate how you would you know like how long you'd be out to sea for because you'd have to stop and get food you can't just stop and get fuel off of a ship i mean you could but you know you can't get food off of a ship i mean you could but not really <laughs> so you'd have to be like all right we're running low on supplies we're gonna have to make sure we head back to port to get this kind of stuff or you know the marines are are they're getting hungry they, they kind of their supplies ships got hit we can spare a little bit of food for them we'll swing by and drop some food off or we sunk these merchant ships, we need extra stuff too. Let's try to see what kind of stuff we can fish out of the ocean for them. Kind of a little bit of a, you know, it adds a, kind of a little RPG element to it a little bit where you have to make sure that the, everything, the supplies on the ships are managed well. Like, you know, if you're, you got an aircraft carrier and you're not, not doing any, you know, any bombing, you're just gonna be like, oh, we're going straight anti-ship. Bring nothing, bring nothing but torpedoes. Leave all the bombs behind. But all of a sudden, like an island's being attacked and you kind of need to bomb some stuff. Oh, crap. Well, all we got is torpedoes. It would add kind of like a variety to it a little bit. To me, this would be awesome because, frankly, I'm kind of tired of FPS World War II games. We've we kind of had enough of them. There's been too many of them. And, you know, when it comes to, like, naval stuff, sure, you got War Thunder and World of Warships, but that's not really that great. You're starting to get War on the Sea, which is cool. The Silent Hunter series, like... It started to scratch a surface that it could have picked a lot deeper if it went into different ships and things like that. And it just seemed like such a cool base game and that if it was expanded upon and took some other ideas from other games, dude, it would be so cool. Like, who wouldn't want to, like... Dude, could you imagine taking the Bismarck and being like, you know what? We're going through the Panama Canal and taking it into the Pacific. Like, dude, that would be the craziest game ever. All of a sudden, America's like, we're fighting Japan. And then they look over, they're like, is that the fucking Bismarck? And then the Bismarck's in the fight with them. Like, dude, it would be crazy. Like, just being able to do air power. I mean, Jesus, like, being able to do the actual nuclear strike, like, history-wise, when it comes up, like, you know, dropping the atomic bombs, doing that whole flight. I've done it in IL-2 1946. Full missions. It took a long-ass flight. But being able to do that and just, like, you know, controlling your own task force and going around and just kind of taking on the Pacific or the Atlantic in any ship you wanted or taking out 
you know, taking out ships with, dude, taking, you know, actually having a German carrier and taking that out to sea. Like, oh my God, that would be insane. That would be such a cool game. And just being like, you know, we're going to hang out in the middle of the Atlantic and just kill ships. No one can touch us. You know, that would be crazy. I think that would be a really cool game. Everyone kind of sleeps on air and, and sea kind of mixed together in World War II. And we do not have a lot of games representing that at all. But I think that would be a really cool way to start. Just mixing all these games together. Taking all the great ideas from them and just throwing it in and just making one cool air, air and naval World War II game. I think that would be amazing. Let me know what you guys think about this idea. It would be cool if you would play it, if you'd spend $60 on it. Let me know in the comments below. Talk to you guys later. Peace.